All right, combustion reactions are reactions where something is burned. Combustion is just a fancy way of saying burning. So if we're gonna burn a piece of paper, everybody knows that we need air for that to happen. Because if you, let's say, if you were to light something on fire and then smolder it by you know, covering it with, let's say, a trash can or something like that, the fire is gonna go out. That's because the air has oxygen in it and uh, combustion needs oxygen to happen. So in, in this equation, we see O2, which is oxygen gas, and it has to be present for combustion. And in general chemistry and intro to chemistry, you're gen anytime you see a, um, a combustion reaction, you're generally going to be um, combusting hydrocarbons. Those are just carbon or uh, <laughs> compounds that are that are made up only of carbon and hydrogen. This one in particular is propane, and that's the same kind of stuff you use in a gas grill. So, if you have propane and oxygen and you apply heat, then it's going to burn. I think every, everybody's pretty familiar with that. And what you're going to get out of it is CO2, which is carbon dioxide and H2O, which is water. And that, anytime you see a combustion of a hydrocarbon, these are always going to be your products. But now we can see that this isn't balanced, because on the left side we have, let's see, three carbons, but on the right side we only have one. So obviously those three didn't just disappear and go off into nothing. They, they have to be accounted for, so that's all part of balancing the chemical equation. So it would be really nice to say, well, okay, let's just balance this. There's, there's a three here, so let's just put a three right there and then go from there. Well, now we're messing with this compound. Remember that whenever you see a formula written, right, like CO2, H2O, or C3H8, that stands for a specific compound. For instance, this one has one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms, like this. And that is going to behave as a unit. You can't just add another carbon to it without changing the identity of what it is. So if we think about this like a recipe for making brownies, then you can think of this as your you know, your water and your eggs, and then this is your brownies and your deliciousness. So you don't want to change what you're making, and if you were to add three more carbons onto here, then you'd have something completely different. You would not have CO2. So we can't just go in and throw numbers in wherever we need to. However, what we can do is write numbers out in front and say, just like right here, it's saying, okay, I only need, you know, uh, one egg and one cup of water. Well, that might not be right. We might need more eggs. So I'm just going to draw these out right quick. We have two oxygen atoms, which behave as one unit, right? And then one molecule of propane, which looks like this, and with eight H's on it. I'm not going to draw the H's in each one of these but it has eight of them. So those are the hydrogens. And this behaves as one unit. So we can't take any atoms off of that or add any atoms to that. So we have to work with what we're given. There's the H, there's the H. Now the only thing we could change is the number of how many of these how many of these we have, and that's what balancing a, a chemical equation is all about. We could put coefficients out in front of here to symbolize how many of the ingredients do we need to make our brownies, or in this case our carbon dioxide and our water. Well, with a combustion of hydrocarbons, there's a, uh, a pretty simple or straightforward method for doing it. And the first thing I do, step number one, is to balance the carbons. So one, balance carbons. That's the first thing I do. So I'm gonna look, and over here I have how many carbons? 
I have one, two, three, and that's it. So I have three carbons. Now over here, I see I only have one carbon. So if I were to multiply this by three, throw a three out here, now that would give me the right number of carbons, right? So, and, but that would change my number of oxygens. Oxygens, we're gonna leave those till the very end. Instead, once the carbons are balanced, we're gonna go to step number two, which is balance the hydrogens. So I'm looking on the right, and I see we have eight hydrogens total, right? All eight of those. And over here, I see that we only have two. So what can I multiply this by in order to get the right number of hydrogens? Well, if I multiply this by four, then that would give me four of these molecules, right? And then on each one, there'd be two hydrogens. So altogether, we'd have eight hydrogens, which would give me the right number over here. So now we're balanced in both uh, carbons and hydrogens. The only thing that's left is oxygens. And the reason why we save oxygens for last, which is balance, the third step, balance oxygens, the reason we save this for last is because oxygen is the only one that's all alone in a combustion reaction. Everything else is either paired with an oxygen, a carbon, right? These hydrogens are paired with carbons. Oxygen is always by itself with a combustion reaction. So if we save that for the end, then it should then our final number that we need should be pretty simple. So let's let's see. How many oxygens do I have here? None. How many do I have here? Well, I have two. And how about over here? Well, now we've changed the number, right? Now instead of just having one of these molecules, now we have three of them to deal with. Well, if we have three of these molecules and each one has two oxygens, then we must have a total of six oxygens. And over here, and that's just for that one molecule, now we have four of these molecules and each one of them has two. So we have eight or oxygens there. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Should be four, four oxygens. I was, I was counting hydrogens. So if we had four of these molecules, each one has one oxygen, then we have a total of four. So on, the, on this whole side, how many oxygens do we have? Well, that's 10. And so now how can we get 10 oxygens over on the left side? Well, since that's O2, we can't change that. We can't just, you know, we can't just keep adding those. We're gonna have to multiply by something that will give us that. And it should be pretty obvious if we multiply by five, then that'll give us a total of 10 over here. And let's see, so if we had five of those molecules, these groups, we'd have one, two, three, four, five. Each one would have two oxygens for a total of 10 oxygens. And now we can just double check and say, okay, how many carbons? I have three. Over here, I have three. How many hydrogens total? I have eight. Over here, I have four times two, which is eight. And over here, how many oxygens? Okay, a total of two times five, it's 10. And then we have two times three and four times one, total of 10. And so we're balanced.